Good night and welcome to another episode of Reason with Ashley and Mort. I'm Ashley and Mort and as you can see, I have a panel of young persons tonight right here on Reason with Ashley and Mort. Um, their names are on the screen, but I will do them the honor of introducing them because I see them as esteemed youth leaders, right? So tonight, as you come in, if this is the first time you're watching Reason with Ashley and Mort, um, it's a show that I do on Jamaicans.com um, every Saturday, 7 p.m. Jamaica time, 8 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time. And look here, we have a lot of viewers across the world, and I completely appreciate you. So right away, you're going to tell me where you're broadcasting from, or where you're connecting from. I'm broadcasting from the beautiful city of Kingston, Jamaica, and I'm here with Miss Makeda, <laughs> who you met last week. She's a little fussy this week, but we're going to work with it. You understand? We're going to work with it. So tonight, I have the pleasure of sharing this screen, this platform with, um, with who I tell you are esteemed youth leaders. I am speaking about, and look here, me ask them, or oh, them would like to be introduced. You understand? So I am joined by Neville Charlton, and he's the chair and founder of the Youth Inspiring Positive Change Organization, right, Neville? Youth Influence Positive Change, not organization, J-A. Yes, yes. Oh, J-A, yeah. J-A, all right. I'm also joined by Boa, she has many titles. <laughs> she is, um, and what I just learned recently, a, a film graduate from the iCreate Institute, right? She's also a former liberal Jamaica intern. <laughs> she is the CEO of her own events, well, well, wedding events, um, planning and, uh, and management company. She is also yes. a talk show host. Come make with, come make with chat, right? Come make with chat her show, name is, yes. Yes, come make with chat show. And her name is Lamoy McLean. Thank you for joining us, Lamoy. And of course, we can have a discussion about politics. And do not bring in Mr. Alan Carter who is a former host of the Beneath the Surface show. Um, it's a, it, it's a, what, what I would call an internet radio show. All right? So right away, I'm seeing Anne Karen, who is connecting from Toronto. Never is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> camera, 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 camera difficulty. Hold on, guys. Don't worry. I'll have it fixed here. All right, there we go, there we go. So we have Anne Karen here from Toronto and she said, never you're handsome. Oh, thank I you. I don't know if you're seeing the comments and she's saying, Lamoy, I'm going to pull up the live on my other device so that I can share the comments as they come in. Drop your comments below guys and let's continue the conversation even afterwards by you sharing this video. So tonight, we are talking about general elections in Jamaica, right? And the, the lead up to it. And we're going to be speaking about it in some specific terms. I'm not going to be doing most of the talking. I'll allow my panelists to take over because I do identify them as young people who have been following what is happening in the political space in Jamaica and who, are, who have very strong views about politics in Jamaica. So right away, I'm going to ask them, are you voting in Jamaica 2020 general election? Lamoy? Um, let, me, let, me, let me just quick say a quick thing before I answer that question. So earlier on, before I came on the program, I had on a shirt. <laughs> um, I, I guess if the viewers saw the color shirt, then they'd have something else to say. But no, I'm not <laughs> voting for this year. <laughs> so I changed the shirt and I came in yellow, yes. something neutral, nothing to do yes. with politics. And I'm, I'm yes. feeling so good about that. Hello, I'm in white. I am in white and that was intentional. <laughs> so are you voting? Are you voting this year? 
No, I'm not. Uh, no, you're not. Boy, boy Ashley, no. Ashley, my party backed out last night. The JPP, I think, <laughs> I was going to... No, man, I was really going to give them a chance, you know, but they backed out. So, yes. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm out of this one. You know? Alan, I don't believe you. You, on, you, you, you this one. Listen, let me tell you something. I have to be paying attention now. You know what I mean? I have to study the landscape better. So before I put my, my thing in the pot, I'm going to have to study yes. the landscape again because of a lot of things that I observed um, with both parties um, during the time, right? And when you say so both parties, you're speaking talk, about the Jamaica Labour Party and the People's National Party. Yeah, man, they, they, they only, the only two parties in this country. But I was seriously, yeah, seriously going to put my, my hat and strength behind the JPP. I was serious. For real? The back out. All right, before I, before I, I want to get back to you, Alan, but I want to speak with Neville. Neville, will you cast a vote come September 3? Definitely, I'll be voting. Um, it's integral that um, as young people and as citizens of Jamaica are participating in the political process, right? Um, I have already identified and look at where various policies and practices from both parties um, look at both as their agenda manifesto um, as well as look at the party culture to make a good um, as it is um, a good to, to really influence my vote so yes I'll be voting yes um, yeah definitely will be voting all right um, Alan I have to come back to you so you talk about the GPP tell me why you why, why you had initial, initially decided to look support here, them. Look here. When, when you see the manifesto of this party, I'm saying to myself, uh, we have had many manifestos over the years, manifestos over yes. the years, right? Yes. And the, the parties, they came in and they promised a few things and they didn't deliver. And I'm saying, you know, let's let's give these men of God an opportunity to, to see if, 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 I mean, because if we have been failed um, repeatedly, by by our, our, our political leaders repeatedly, yes. then yes. in give them a chance. So that was what that was my decision though. That was my thing. I was serious about it. When the back door that I decided that all right, let me observe. Let me be an observer in this one. But what do you think about it? Why what do you, why do you think they withdrew? I think they were having some issues with setting up the bank account and whatever. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that was the reason given. But I mean, maybe there's something much deeper than that. There's something yeah. happening within our political space that would not allow another party to emerge. I don't know. But all of all of all of the ones that we have seen so far have not um really broken ground any at all. Well, uh, all right. I want to take a question from our viewers. And as you see, ZZ Palmer is here. She says, good evening, Ashley. Um, the cutie, you're talking about Makeda. She's right here following the conversation. I've, I'm seeing here where Orville is saying, why is it that people can call... Hold on, let me see if I get this properly. So why is it that people can casually say they're not voting? Um, Neville. Can you answer that for me? Um, I think even Alan had touched on it earlier, had alluded to it that um, a lot of young people, a lot of Jamaica citizens, um, they have lost the, the, the drive or the passion due to various premises from both um, parties. And I think usually, um, apart from the fact that they have lost the passion, there's a high sense of both as a party where persons are just disengage or dis are not interested in the political process. But for me, yes. I think as individuals, it all starts in a community that you are a part of, or it all starts, uh, um, say for example, you're a part of in Kingston Central, it all depends on you advocating and knowing your MP and going out and holding them accountable, looking at work that needs yes. to be done and see how best you can be a part of the process. I think too often they said that, oh, they're not doing anything, but what are we doing on our end? Oh, can we be a part of the process, right? And uh, while it's a two-way street, if you realize that the People's National Party or the Jamaica's Labour Party is not doing enough, what are you doing to hold them accountable? Even if you don't yes. vote, how are you going yes. to ensure that you hold our leaders accountable? So I just think that we're just not interested in, 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 in the process, but yet we have a lot of complaints. Yes. Can I say and something I towards that? Go ahead, Lamoy. 
it based on the on on the very same word that Neville mentioned earlier on, which was influence. We don't as youths and as young people, we don't have enough of that influence. So let us say something as simple as as a street as a street project, right? Um, basically, what will happen is that you'll find that the younger persons are not involved in that. And yeah. the younger persons aren't diarchied um, labor rights or PMP. What we are, are people looking for an opportunity. And we're not getting that opportunity. So it doesn't really matter if it's PMP, if it's labor rights, or even JPP. What we need to see is something that is beneficial for us as youth. And yes, we, not all of us, but some of us are going out. We're taking the initiative. We're working on the certain organization. But is that enough? Is that enough? Um, and I want to, I want to valid point Lamoy, and I really want to bring in some of the comments um, being shared on our live. I see MG Carby saying labor is in trouble all over the world. I don't know which labor MG is speaking about, um, but let let it be let it be clear here that we are speaking from an informed and an objective space, right? Um, while it is that my panelists may cast a vote. Um, come September 3, we are having an objective discussion, right, about uh, politics in Jamaica. And specifically, we're speaking about the general election and just your whole thoughts, your, your feelings about it, right? I also want to share here, um, oh, labor unions, MG corrected. All right, labor unions is in trouble all over the world. I agree with that. Orville says, I used to feel this way, but the answer is to cast a vote and be active in your community. Be a voice and a leader in your community as well. I honestly believe that this, I still believe, I mean, honest, from, from my perspective, I don't, I haven't decided if I'm going to cast a vote and primary, one of the primary reasons is I am, I have not seen that transformational leader, especially for the constituency. Um, that I currently, that I'm a part of, right? So until I've seen that transformational leader, I don't know, I, I probably, I, I need to hear more about their plans. But I want to continue the discussion along the lines of the election dubs. I'm pretty sure my panelists have been hearing these dubs that are circulating, circulating primarily on social media. So I'm going to jump over to Alan. Alan, which one are the dubs you hear and which one is your favorite? All right. So, so first, so firstly, before before I answer that question, what I believe is lacking in Jamaica as well is political intelligence by our people. Our people are not yes. politically intelligent, and so therefore, casting a vote just like that to me is unintelligent. Okay. Yes. Persons will disagree, but I think we need to reach a point, as, as, as I said, maybe the next generation, maybe the generation gone, but the generation to come have to get to a point where they, they can make decisions within the public space intelligently. No, they dub them no. <laughs> I, I heard a few, and... and they have me cringing, to be honest. As a young person, they have me cringing for a number of reasons. Why? Dance hall in Jamaica is not, is something that is frowned upon. Oftentimes, it is, it is, it is, it is given the most, it is given, is not given enough attention, one. If it is being fought. We know that hands down, categorically, it's being fought yes. by a certain sector within our country, and we know that. Zane, now, election time, wants a vote. We could jump on the popular ship. I'm a fan of dancehall, Zane. Um, I used to be a party promoter. I stopped. Me used to take pictures. Me used to be a part of it. So I used to be in the streets, and I know that dancehall is a part of our culture. It is. It is sometimes, as I said, it is frowned upon. But 
it is it is very unfortunate because it forms a, a part of the economy that keeps a lot of persons eating and and, and well and then again it is yes. fought by 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 the elites they don't like yes. it yes election time some of these individuals they come around now and say all right then look here we're gonna do a dub plate for what? What is the end game of these things? So that after when we done the dub and we, we get in, we start fighting again. You know, make no sense to me. But I don't know. None not really catch me. I mean, most of them, I don't know. You know, you know, move that, me. Th thanks but for that. Thanks for that, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> but Ashley, <laughs> tell you, Ashley, tell you lie. before you come in, Lamoy, them have a buzz. Them have a buzz. Mr. 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 <laughs> some of them, and I, I must come in the dance hall, Artie. For some of them transforming their lyrics just to suit the dub, right? Just to suit, suit the um campaign of the MP or the caretaker, the councillor. Lamoy, what are you saying? No, I'm saying um I've seen a few of the dubs. I've heard a few of them too. You know, them sound good and all of that. Yeah, I like the spice one. And me, the first one I heard was actually the Shensia. You know, but... You hear the dub Magnum? <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't hear the Dovey Magnum, but this is what I'm trying to say. Dancehall music is, is classified in such a way and beat down even by the government. Why you don't want to put dub in a, in a politics now? Yeah, for me, them look good, them sound good, but do they... What, 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 what is it that you're teaching your Jamaican people now? At one point in time, you're yeah, war with Jamaican music and now you're using it as, you know, mm. politics thing. Mm -hmm. It just not make no sense to me. It's controversial. You have the two same artists, the three artists, them will work for Ramesh. One do for Labour, right? One do for PMT. I mean, don't you see what they are doing to Jamaica? And we're just sitting down and accepting it? Because it is election time. No, my love. So, all right. I want to be sure about something. Are you saying, therefore, Lamoy, the artist should not be voicing dubs for a politician? Well, I'm not really saying that, you know, because I know so the artists them will come for me. But what I'm saying, and then you. again, it, it is a business. It is a business, but what I'm yeah, saying is that if, if you are going to deal in politics, you're supposed yeah, to have man. some form of, as him said, said, the right thing, some form of decency to carry out the politics procedure. Bob Marley yeah. don't come and, and say it long time. You know, there was one time when Bob was trying to use music to get to the people. Yeah. Not true to politics. Now that same music is used in politics, bend, bend the rules of everything and then it just not teach we nothing. Valid point. Valid point. It not teach we nothing. Before you, before you jump in, Alan, Neville, what do you think about the election dub? Is do you think that they are meaningless? I have to go, I, again play the devil's advocate. Um, I like the dubs. Um, and okay. we have to look at the fact that we are in a pandemic, which is COVID nineteen. And as such, the, the, the dynamics of online and engagement is changing. And election, I, the politicians, we have never really seen a pandemic like this before. That's one. Secondly, when you look at it, dancehall have always been a part of Jamaica politics from way back when. Last year, even the reggae artists, when you, if you go to any um, political rally, dancehall, yes. dead it. And look at the dynamics. And I'm going to point out one example. Spice and, 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 and Lisa Anna were always close, even before politics. Spice always supported um, Lisa Anna. That dub is a good dub for me. And the artists are changing how they engage with it now. And I think it also builds. I think looking at it from the, from, from the point of Alan, what needs to be done now is that we need to look at it and say, how can we push dancehall as a global music and engage it not just in politics? But I think using the dub is good. Um, I think it's a good idea that they're doing the dub to dub because now it's not like they can go to rallies and all of that. Right? I think it's a, I think it's a good idea. And even when you look at it, a lot of people don't even read the manifesto when the manifestos are published. So a lot of people saying, oh, why are you pushing out? Why are you dropping the manifesto? 
how much are we actually read the manifesto? I, I might sit down and go through the manifesto, but how much people actually read the manifesto? So I think what we need to really look at now is how we can engage with the music more, even after politics. Um, and I even think it gives them a good platform. I like the dogs. Clash with Clash. Yes. Let, let. <laughs> You say it, you say it, exactly. right. I was just about to say it feels like a sound clash. Um, Orville says, I think the dubs get younger people involved in voting. It's a good strategy. I, I, I agree with that because youth apathy is real in Jamaica, especially when it comes on to politics. And I think if it is that they want to connect with the young people, then you need to meet you, whoever you're targeting, you meet them where they're at. So that's just straight marketing. But I want to speak about some of the campaign promises. I know Alan and Neville has men, um, have mentioned that they, they've looked through um, manifestos, you understand, even though the party that Alan wanted to vote for withdrew. Yeah. And I, and just, what are just you I think. Eh? I think that I think that <laughs> Alan Poetry boy wanna pull out a lot by it. Sixty billion dollar in a yeah, ninety million. Yeah, I believe them. I believe yeah. them. I believe Fight them. Fight a jet. Fight a jet. Listen, <laughs> listen to me. This is Jamaica. I believe them. I believe them. Anything Why? is possible. Why? Tell yeah, me what specific what specifically on the manifesto spoke to you, Alan. <laughs> I and think it's the money from the DPP. Is, yeah, it's the free education. Clearing, clearing, <laughs> clearing off. Hold on. No, 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 no. We have to see us about this. Clearing off yes. the debt in 90 days. Amazing. Amazing. 90 days. But is that possible? Debt. Is that possible? Of course it is. Anything is possible. This is Jamaica. Hey. All right. <laughs> Neville, Neville, what are your thoughts on the manifestos that you have read so far, the campaign promises that are being made by the candidates running in the you general You know, it's so election? funny. Um, it was just last night. Uh, it was Thursday night. I was doing a live on politics, and I said, that you really have some good manifestos in there? I'm not going to really call the names of persons can start to jump yeah, no. who are going to be voting. <laughs> no me, name calling good, in this live. You have, some, you have some good manifestos. That's the one. You have some poor manifestos, and you have some persons in politics that they are failed. They are failed the people of Jamaica, Wickedly. and I think them... And I think the manifest the need, like some of them need to go. And I think what personally, although I've been voting for a party, I think if I could take persons from the Jamaica Labour Party, take people from the People's National Party, and just put them together and uh, separate them from the rest, then that would be good. Uh -huh. uh, the second thing is some of these people in politics, I think they are too old and we need to start learning this term limit, term limit, right? Because at the end of the day, you have people with 90, 80, 100. Uh, over is actually oh god um, oh god we don't have no politician <laughs> with 100 years old stop it <laughs> but i just i just feel, i just feel the consultant that's that yeah i just feel yeah, like, the consultant. Um, yeah, yeah, I just man. feel as if I, I just but I, I see some I see some yeah. really good manifesto and I should as well I see some people being paired up against specific people. I don't know why yes. they decide to do that because yes. You have some wonderful people and both political divided. And I said, Jesus, I would have voted for that one. Here, but that one is good. But the one that has to over what... there. Why? So mm -hmm. I think the manifesto, some are good, some are poor. Um, but it really boils down to the work. And I, I don't really see anything that addresses the crime problem. So that's one of my yes. major things. If I don't see a manifesto that clearly outlines crime and how they're going to curtail the crime and stuff. And I don't want to leave out the people watching this this live. Um, we're just about um, out of time. But I want to acknowledge that most of the people watching this live now are Jamaicans across the globe, in the US, in the UK, in Canada. And I want to hear from them. If you've seen a manifesto that really spoke to you, please tell me why in the comments below. I have before I wrap up the live though, I have to speak Hold about on. hope. Rasta yes, Alan. Alliance. What is that? Rasta Alliance movement. Oh, All right, let vote. me it's oh vote for Ras oh Ras Asta Black Jamaica Alliance Movement, St. James. All right, Ras Asta. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So before we wrap the live, we must speak about COVID-19 and the campaigning, election campaigning. Guys, do you think 
and honestly now, I want to hear from each of you. How you feel, say, these politicians can ensure that their campaigners uh, abide by the protocols, especially the social distancing protocols during campaigning. Um, very quickly, Lamoy. Well, I, I mean, social distance cannot be avoided unless you were get, definitely going to have your campaign that home through social media where you're in your party, you have your own pad cover at home by it's yourself. It's a virtual party. Virtual. virtual party. It's been done everywhere. So maybe they can think about something like that. If, if it is to be done, then somebody cares. If not, this is not going to go well. Because people are, you know how election is, how people behave and carry on. I don't think there is no rules and laws that could actually tell Jamaican people said do social distancing in the voting season. Level social distancing uh, and campaigning. Boy, it hard. You know, so as Jamaican we are really, and especially when politics when. They look at who is going to be voting, especially people from the inner city. Um, I even when they look at persons, um, when politics and them go out for campaign, everybody, even though them wear them mask and them whatever, whatever, them still have to pack up beside each other. So I think, I think it, for me, COVID-19 not going away for now, but I don't, I don't think it's something they can they avoid and it's going to do electronic voting. I, look, I don't even think about on the day when um persons voting. I really want to see the dynamics of that, but for now, I think he's campaigning. Um, a lot of people, even when they look at the realities, they're not wearing the mask. Some people trying their best to do it, but as I say, I just not going out to any. I just going to watch and observe. Okay, Alan. Ah, uh, look here. I have to be real. Although I'd love for my people to respect the COVID nineteen, we all know that when you come on to politics, that will go out the window. I think we, we can we can sign off on that. However, I would just like to encourage individuals participating, responsible individuals participating in that process to continue to be responsible. Wear your mask yes. in public. Wear your mask in public and avoid mass gatherings. This thing is no joke. It's here to stay, yes, but we have to change the dynamics of the thing. And I'm sure that they, 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 you have responsible individuals who are participating as well. As to the keyless one, them, boy, a cycle. <laughs> I don't know what else to say where that is concerned. Yeah. But we must yeah. have an election, though. We, I think, I think we, we have been nagging for it for a while. And I, and I, and I think that I must say, though, that it is quite unfortunate that our prime minister did not have this thing set out from get go. So from before COVID, we should have known when an election. As in a set and election day. Set term. And I think he did say that on the stage, you know. He did promise that. So that was one thing that, that I think that you know it, it must watch. You have to I can say can this set. unreservedly. I can say this unreservedly. I believe it was strategic. Can be, but if you look at it, you know. But if you look at it, it is it is really set to be before the school term start. So you really want nothing else, really. You know, you just want to get that thing the out of the way because we already have a, such a long break. So it's just to get back on the road in terms of school and everything else in the country. You know what I mean? Ooh, okay, just, but I, 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 I accept that, Alan. Nice. But that wasn't the strategy I was I was pulling on. I should <laughs> want to know the strategy you're pulling on as well. But I would say, you know. I, no, but I'm that going boy. to say something. Maybe it's not that strategy, but remember, we've had an election like this before. We've had a time period in Jamaica where the country has run down and the election did call. And then at, I think it was in 2009, if I'm correct, yes. the same year when Bruce Golin, Honorable Bruce Golin, um, came into power. Or was put, I, I don't want to say anything wrong, but at that point in time, the country was going through some really bad things. I remember hurricane, I remember all of these things. So I'm wondering if strategically they plan to make election a time when Jamaica is in dire need. And then well, the point that I would say, one more thing before we go. Yes. Um, in, the, in the time that as never said, times change and um, we're doing things over the internet now, virtual. 
I think it we could set a, a point where pass the election done in one day. We could have laid out some plans where we say, all right, this week is election, not just one day. So we can break down the people them to come in to actually um, avoid that mass gathering and eliminate people point. from getting more sick. I take that point, and that's something that I think is very, very important, especially because we do not want to see a second wave of COVID-19 cases. We don't want it to go on and on forever. No. You understand? People are bank on 2021, 2022. Come on. We don't want to bring COVID into 2021. So I invite all of you guys to speak with, start with your family. Um, start with your family in terms of advising them of the social distancing protocol, the need to wear your mask, right? And also, can I add if you, if, if you don't need to go outside? Campaign virtually. Nothing is wrong with that, right? I want to thank all my panelists for spending the past half an hour with me. I truly appreciated your contributions. Big up. So the people in another in other comment section and Karen says I've been watching and they are not wearing masks. Very disappointing. Why? And Karen, they we don't know, so we can't we can't whip them. And I don't want nobody whipping nobody, right? But with, with I think it's just personal responsibility now. That is what it comes down to. Um many thanks to Lamoy McLean, many thanks to Neville Charlton, and many thanks to Alan Carter for spending some time with us please go You're ahead welcome. and check out their initiatives i'm hoping that beneath the surface returns alan lamoy all Let's the best see. with the event planning and the filmmaking she has you. a new movie coming out breaking news inspired thank by you. Dexter Dapp, new song and neville you know you're always involved in positive initiatives across the island let me see everywhere and i'm see you everywhere even <laughs> in the even in the caribbean big up yourself neville go and check out let me see if I'm getting it right. Youth Inspiring Positive Change, J.A. Yes. See, I get it right. <laughs> and of course, you can follow me on Facebook. I am Ashley and Mort on Facebook. Instagram, it's A Mort. Twitter, A underscore Mort. And I'm also on YouTube, you know, guys. Ashley and Mort. Just search for me. Thank you as always. And good night. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>